This episode's FDR shoutout goes to Penelope Zukowski. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Fish for Thought. I'm your host Chris, and you're watching Fish Tank Room. We're going to the pet store. Not exactly sure what fish we're getting just yet, but we're gonna get some new fish. We could probably put a beta fish in here. We are going to get every single one of these guys. We're getting fish for this aquarium. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll get all these. An African cichlid tank, flower horn tank, the 90 gallon. Here is Luna's aquarium. Oh, wait, no, we have a beta fish over there. There is tons of comments saying this tank right here is actually too small for the beta fish. On, on to the next two ponds and then another pool pond. Oh, there's one. This one's a little, I don't know what happened to him. They're both like half alive and like half. Oh, that one's swimming. Oh, 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 oh. Yay! Thank you to my subscribers, to those watching, to my Patreon team. If you want to support my channel and you like the content, please make sure to leave a like. Like Squad, you've been doing great. Keep it up. Let's get 1,200 likes to unlock next week's FTR. Follow me up on Instagram to check out viewer submitted tanks by you. Follow me on my adventures and eating stuff. I'm always eating stuff. Also, there's a new thing on Instagram now for my stories. I'm hosting these fish tournaments. Last week, you guys voted and more than half of you voted the Neon Tetra over the Harlequin Resvora. The Neon Tetras are moving up to compete with the next species. So let's see just how far the Neon Tetras can make it. So make sure to be on the lookout so that you get a chance to vote. Found on eBay, shake my head. Oh man. Whew. Oh no, 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 no. Absolutely no redeeming factor here. Some people like to say like, oh, they're only in a bowl for the camera and then they'll be put back to the tank. You'd be surprised how much damage these female bettas can do just being left in a bowl for a little bit of time. At this point, we should be wishing that it was Photoshopped and I really don't think it's Photoshopped. That is at least 10 female bettas in a sorority. I've heard people not do sorority tanks right but this is like by far exceeding all everything that's happened before. Found on eBay, so they're trying to sell this tank to some poor soul who doesn't know that this is wrong. This is the worst tank that I have seen in a while. That female up top is like, yep, I've seen things. I've seen a lot of things. The larger tank from the place I'm pet sitting. It's got one fish inside of it. This tank is pretty interesting. It's almost like a mirror. I can see exactly everything that's being reflected. I think it's because it doesn't have a light and it's also very dark from the algae. Tank is really dark and the surrounding areas are brighter. It tends to just reflect everything. Oh, and this is the one fish that was in there. This is some cichlid of some species and it looks like bone dry. It looks like it hasn't had a meal in like three weeks, maybe more. It's definitely neglected. Maybe it even has worms. Wonder what the owners are doing. This fish tank is sent in by Bianca Gonzalez, showcasing a nice and green and well done betta tank. Love the wide open space for the betta to swim. Love that it's got live plants all throughout. No fake plants to be seen. I love that there's no powerful flow because bettas don't really like it when there's a lot of flow in the tank. Kind of tires them out. What I do want more of is some sort of hardscape, maybe some raw but I would recommend a nice wood feature with some interesting lines and then you can even plant in and around that wood piece. And here's Bianca's little betta, Prometheus. Cool name. Very scary movie. I don't... I always get really scared by those kind of movies. This Prometheus is pretty cute. It's like yawning or something. Maybe it's hungry. Keep it up. 4.2 out of 5 for now. Good job. $50 for this. Fishbowl. Aquarium starter kit. $50. Hey, when they label it, an aquarium starter kit, like, are you sure? Is it an aquarium if it's a fishbowl? Also, let's just talk about that price. $50? You are kidding me. If you gave me $50, I, I would definitely get more done than just get a fishbowl with some fish food and some plastic decorations. This is like a scam for new fish keepers. This is like some lazy parent who wants to save money, think they're smart in getting this starter kit on Craigslist, whatever, instead of doing their research and just outright get scammed, bro. 50 bucks, I hope nobody gets that. I don't know what's worse, the stocking, the price for the fact that it's supposedly 800 gallons. Ooh, those are some big paku carrot cichlids in there for sure. Honestly, if they took away the super big fish, because even if it is 800 gallons, it does not look like it's enough 
to pack in those Paku. Who knows, they're probably not maxed out in size. And then there's the price, the outrageous price tag, $3,500. Dude, Chad, bro, you're the real Chad. Who in their right mind is gonna get it? Someone who's hardcore about keeping monster fish isn't gonna fall for that. Someone who's not hardcore isn't gonna spend a whopping 3,500 bucks. Good luck, man. Your demographics do not match. Brandon McGraw and this tank. Very interesting scape straight off the bat. You've surrounded your centerpiece ornament thing with a corkscrew valve. And then the centerpiece wood feature is kind of odd to me. It looks kind of like a hut made out of chola wood. Cholia? I don't, I'm just gonna call it chola. I think it's not correct, but whatever, I'm not. That guppy up there looks a bit like it's struggling a little. <laughs> Could be developing some back problems, but I do like that it's understocked. Not seen chola wood utilized this way, so that is kind of cool as well. Yeah, overall not bad. I would just suggest maybe looking into a different sort of wood feature. I always like to get like one or two big pieces of wood, play around with it, try to go for like manzanita or spider wood. For now, give it a four out of five. Good job. This is a literally a aquarium, just why? I see what you did there. Yeah, I've seen these in the past before. In the comments though, I found that these fish tanks actually don't have any fish in it and it also does flush. So you, you can see the water going down when you flush and rising back up. And it's just basically ornamental, so it's not really containing any live uh, animals. Which is, I mean, technically that's fine in my books. It also doesn't have live plants in it because it's all plastic. The fact that it doesn't have any fish places it on top of like every single bat tank we've reviewed so far. And one of these comments said how to do a water change the easy way. <laughs> This tank is sent in by Charlie T. Seems like an assorted Garami tank. You got a gold Garami, you got a dwarf Garami, and in the back there that might be a croaking or sparkling Garami. Due to the angle of this tank, I can't really judge it the way I want to. From what I can see from this angle, it looks like a mighty fine tank. The back is covered by green plants, the top got floating plants, nice robust wood pieces as a hardscape, Nubius Nana on some of the wood. Not sure what that lava rock is doing right in the front there is kind of distracting from the scape but overall I can tell that this is not a bad scape at all. Because of the angle I can't really go all in and judge it 100%. 4.3 out of 5 though, good job. Okay, really bad small tanks everywhere. Oh, oh that's why he's asking, are you kidding me? Oh man, that's... Let's get an F train down this comment section below, RIP in peace. I mean, yes, this place was filled with little tiny vases as fish tanks when that should never be the case. Also, maybe less well known, especially to people who would put betta fish into small containers, is that betta fish really love to just jump out of the water. They can jump really, really high for a fish. What most people usually do with a uh, fish tank that doesn't have a lid is that they try to stock the fish tank with floating plants like a bunch of duckweed or some frog bits and that really inhibits the fish from jumping. I've not had any problems or heard anyone have problems with a open uh, surface uh, fish tank that had floating plants on it. So a tip for you guys, a pro tip, always put floating plants on top of fish tanks with no lids if you got fish that will jump and better fish are one of them. So are zebra daniels, guppies are also known to jump, shrimp. I've lost a few guppies and shrimp to jumping. Sad face. Georgia Brundell sent in this little creature named Toast. What a cute name and what a cute little guy. Looking very adventurous, healthy, alert, and playful. And this is the tank that it's kept in. It's pretty well aquascaped for a uh, axolotl tank. I know there's a lot of limitations, like not being able to have actual substrate. As you can see that she really made an effort to aquascape this very nicely for him. There's real wood in there, leaching tannins that are very healthy for aquatic life in general. A lot of marimo moss balls and anubias and elodia and I saw some hornwort and there's also pothos in the filter taking all the nitrates and ammonia out of the water. A lot of room for the axolotl to actually swim around and walk around. I'm not going to rate this as a fish tank, I'm going to rate it as a uh, axolotl tank. And for an axolotl tank, 
This is a nice 4.8. Good job. My friend's five gallon beta tank. Oh, geez. I, I feel like I can smell it from here, like through the screen. That's how bad it looks. What do you have to do to make sure that it gets to this point? I feel like even if I did nothing, these tanks would not start looking like that. I guess the only thing is they just left the lights on 24 seven forever. So never turn it on. That would do it for sure. So if you guys see this as a potential tank that you want to have, all you have to do is this one little trick. Keep your lights on forever and you'll be there soon. On the other hand, if you never want your tank to look like this, get a timer, set it to eight hours, and you're good. Best of both worlds, just give you the answer to everything. This is by far one of the worst aquarium I have ever seen, and yes, that is a red tail catfish in the Pleco. And that red tail is not done growing, it's gonna be massive. That tank is way too small, very plain as well, but I guess if you have a big catfish like that, you wouldn't wanna put anything else, except there's a Pleco. The Pleco looks extra droopy. I wouldn't be surprised if that catfish has tried to eat the Pleco before. Probably fit the whole body in its mouth and then realized it's plated, so it just barfed it up. I can totally see that happening because these catfish, they just scour the bottom of whatever and just look for morsels of food to fit in their mouths. And when it like, when the whiskers touch a Pleco, might be some food. So it just turns around and chomp. And that's really not healthy for the Pleco and the catfish itself can get hurt as well. Time for an upgrade. This tank is sent in by John Jarvis. Really nice to look at. It's got some attitude. It's got some personality. The little totem with the live plants coming out of its eyes. That mug is really out of place in my opinion, but it does add some personality. It's, it's speaking things. Yeah, not conventionally something I would like, but I'm gonna rate it a 4.2 out of five. Keep it up and just enjoy what you're doing. It looks like you really are enjoying it. This is Kyra Silverthorn's tank. Two big pieces of Anubius. I think that these pieces of Anubius are fake. If they're not fake, please take them out of the substrate because their uh, roots are gonna rot. You never wanna plant through the rhizome. You wanna leave the rhizome on top and then the little roots coming out of the rhizome will plant itself into the substrate. But anyways, I think these are fake plants that resemble Anubias, which isn't the worst thing in the world. But again, be careful and make sure there's silk because I've heard a lot of incidents where fake plants have cut open fish before. What's really interesting about this scape for me is that I've never seen a substrate that's shaped like that before. It looks very neat and I feel like it could work for some aquascapes. In general, this tank is quite clean. It's uh, not the worst I've seen for betta fish, not at all, not even close. The betta fish's name is Veloxis, pretty cool name. But anyways, I always encourage uh, natural live plants. It's better for your fish for a multitude of reasons and it's also very entertaining as a hobby. For now, I'm giving you 3.5 out of 5. And that's very generous because I usually do not go over a 3 out of 5 for fully uh, artificial tanks. But really, good job. I can tell that you really care about your fish and you care about how your tank looks. If it looks good to you, who cares what I think, right? WTF. Decorating. Astonishing fish tank in bedroom ideas. Adorable. Dot dot dot. Let me tell you something. Astonishing is, is definitely a word I would use for this. I, I am astonished. Even more astonished that it's in the bedroom. Also, how old is that TV hanging from the ceiling? That TV is the thickest thing I've seen. Straight out of 2003. And so is the car. And what is happening in the car? There's definitely fish in there. I commend them for sealing this car watertight, but it feels like it's just filled with massive gravel and the gravel just kind of forms a mountain. There's not too much room for the fish to swim in. I wonder what's up with that. Couldn't you have allowed for more room for the fish? It might have actually been really cool, but all I see really is gravel and there's maybe like two goldfish in there. And how did you get a car into your bedroom? And why do you want this in your bedroom? I have so many questions. Thank you guys for watching this video all the way to the end. You're really, really supporting the videos on this channel by watching them all the way through because then that tells YouTube's algorithms that you guys really do enjoy my videos. And then it keeps pushing it to other people to watch. We need that. If you enjoy content from this channel and you want it to grow, 
please show your support that way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. There'll be more videos to come. And don't forget to get your hands wet.